So what we have here now, this line right here is called a complete ionic equation. It shows all of the ions that are participating in our reaction. To take this complete ionic equation and turn it into what's called a net ionic equation, we're going to take it one extra step. What we're going to do is cancel out the ions that appear exactly the same on both sides of the reaction. These ions are called spectator ions because they don't really affect the reaction in any way. If this was not COVID and you guys actually could participate in sporting events and um, plays and all kinds of fun things that are going on at school uh, during a usual school year, if you're a spectator to an event, you're on the sidelines watching right? Well, that's what happens with our spectator ions in reactions. So if we look at the left-hand side versus the right-hand side of our reaction, when we look at our sodium, on the left-hand side of the reaction, we have 6Na plus 1 aqueous. On the product side, 6Na plus 1 aqueous. Absolutely nothing happened to the sodium throughout the course of the reaction because it looks exactly the same on both sides. So we're going to cancel out those sodium ions. They're spectators. They're there. They're in the beaker or the test tube or wherever this reaction is taking place, but they're not doing anything. So we'll cancel out the sodium. Same thing with our sulfate. We have 3SO4 2 minus aqueous on the reactant side. 3SO4 2 minus aqueous on the product side. Exactly the same. Nothing happens to our sulfate during the course of the reaction. So I'm going to cancel out my sulfates as well. When you look at the other ions though, they look different throughout the course of the reaction. My phosphate on this side is aqueous and a standalone ion. My phosphate on this side is part of a solid and now it's part of this compound. The phosphate isn't a standalone ion anymore. Our copper starts as 3Cu plus 2 aqueous. So a standalone ion in the aqueous form. At the end of the reaction, it's not a standalone ion in aqueous form. It became part of a solid, part of a compound. So something's happening with our phosphate and copper ions. They're the ones that are actually doing something during the course of the reaction. So we cancel out our spectators and whatever is left is called our net ionic equation. I wanted to show you this very same reaction uh, with a particle diagram to show you what's going on. So here's that reaction one more time once written out as a balanced chemical equation with all the states of matter. And then here was our complete ionic equation that we figured out. So below that complete ionic equation, you can see that I've color coded these dots to represent different elements, different ions, I should say. Um, our black dots are going to represent sodium ions. Our purple ones are going to represent parts of that phosphate ion, the phosphorus part of our phosphate ion. Um, our O is going to represent parts of our sulfate and phosphate. Uh, the blue is our copper and S is sulfur. So when we look at our complete ionic equation, when we see six Na plus one aqueous, six individual dots, they are not attached to one another. Right, that common mistake that I said before, uh, that a lot of people accidentally say like this, 2Na3 little plus, what that would mean is that Na little 3 means three dots stuck to one another, and the big 2 means do that twice. That's not what's happening in our sodium phosphate. The water rips it apart into six individual dots. So this goes away. It really looks more like this. So there's our six sodium ions. Next is our two phosphate ions. So the P and the four O's, they stay together, attached to one another. And the word in the symbol up here, they're still attached to one another because in the real life particle diagram, they're attached to one another. So we write it the way it really looks. 
we write it the way it really looks. We have two phosphate groups, two phosphate groups. Next up was three copper ions, individual copper ions. Split them up. We have three sulfate ions. So the water does not pull apart the sulfur from the oxygen. It keeps that one sulfur and four oxygens together, but it does pull it apart into three separate sulfates. On the product side, we have our sodium sulfate, which was aqueous. So that's made up of six sodium ions. Once again, individual dots there. Sulfate, three sulfates. It does not put a, pull it apart into sulfur and oxygen, just three separate sulfate ions. Then here's our solid, our precipitate. It's this big giant clump here that's made up of three coppers and two phosphate ions here and here, right? The Cu3PO42 does not split up in water, so we show it as one big connected group of ions. One big connected group of ions. That's why you can see precipitates, because your eyes can see those big clumps of connected ions. So if we look at this at the particle level, after we cancel out those spectator ions, the 6Na plus looks exactly the same during the course of the reaction. Nothing happens to it on the left side versus the right side. Same with our sulfates. They look exactly the same. Nothing happened to them. The guts of this reaction, the net ionic equation, is that these two phosphate ions and these three copper ions are coming together to make our product. And that's why we can see that precipitate because it's one big giant blob as opposed to our aqueous stuff, which is broken up into smaller pieces. So our net ionic equation shows the guts of that reaction, what's left over and what comes together to form a precipitate.